Okay, this morning we're going to try making a little table ornament for a musician. And we're going to make it out of this piece of uh, pine, which is actually a section of uh, a 2x4. <clears throat> it's one and a half inches across by one and a half inches across. And uh, we need about five inches. <clears throat> I mean about four inches for the uh, actual ornament, but... This is a little bit longer, that way it gives us some handles on the side when we're cutting this thing. This is a three-dimensional compound cut on the scroll saw, and that ought to do it. Uh, what we have to do is, first of all, tape up this block um, with a painter's tape, and then we're going to put some sticky material on the back of the pattern. I use a glue stick. I'm going to glue it to the, uh, the blank. And then we'll be able to do our cutting on the scroll saw. We'll need to drill some entry holes, of course, uh, for the opening of this, the uh, G clef, and uh, also to get to the exterior of it as well. This is a G clef uh, for musicians. Uh, we're going to make it into a little table ornament, hopefully. It'll come out looking pretty good. So let's get started um, by taping this up. We're going to use. Uh, green painters tape on this and um, it's about one and a half inches wide which is nice for this little block and uh, we're going to do it on well, we could do it on all four sides don't really need to do it that much but uh, let's see how it looks when we tape it up <clears throat> okay one side. Two sides. Why are we taping this up? Well, we want to stick our pattern down to it and it's a lot easier to peel off later on when we do this. Also the tape helps the uh, saw blade when it's cutting sort of lubricates it a bit, makes it move a lot smoother, and if you got a hardwood particularly, it prevents it from burning. Won't be so much of a problem with this wood, but uh, we'll use it on here anyways to make it work. Alright, we take our little pattern now of the G-Clef, and we're going to go put some sticky material on the back, and I'll come back and we'll put that on there. All right, I went over to the gluing table and I put some glue stick on the back of this. Now what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to line this up on the block we're going to be cutting so that the line in the center of the pattern is right on the edge of the block. Like that. Okay, that's our first bit of work and then we want to fold this over right on that seam okay just fold it right on over so that it goes flat on this side and this is going to be a three-dimensional object sort of uh, we're going to cut out the actual shape of the g-clef and then this is if you are looking at it from the side we put bulges of different sizes on the top section the middle section and the bottom section and we're going to cut those out and when we're done it should be a rather unique looking g-clef now what we have to do <clears throat> is we've got to go over to the uh, the uh, drill press and drill a hole here a hole here a hole here and one up here those, these are so we can use the scroll saw to cut out the interiors of the G-Clef and this one is so that we can get our blade through there and do a cut all around it. Same thing on the other side except that we only need the one hole for the entry blade and we'll just cut around that at that point. So I'm going to go um, drill those holes right now on the drill press and then we'll come back and we'll cut this thing out on the scroll saw. So I'll see you over at the scroll saw in a little while. We are now ready 
to start cutting. First of all, notice the holes I've put here. Those are the holes I've drilled with my drill press. And we'll start with this side first. And I've used a number seven reverse tooth blade in here. Uh, that ought to be big enough to cut through this uh, one and a half inch wood. I'll lock that down in place. Okay. And we'll be all set to go. Now the first thing we've got to do, of course, is to uh, unlock it <laughs> again and do these internal holes first. So let's, let's get busy on those. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. Sometimes it gets in the way when you're filming like this, since I'm doing this all by myself. If I had a cameraman who could operate and move around, I suppose it would be a little easier, but that's the way it is. Okay, so uh, let's start cutting this. We'll cut it at about quarter speed and see what happens. We can use the end pieces for our handlebars here uh, to do our cutting. Okay, piece popped out of here. We don't need that, so we'll just toss that away. And we'll go on to the next one. Okay, we finished cutting out the first part, uh, which is the uh, main structure of the G-clef. And now, what we want to do is cut out the other angle, the side angle of it. Uh, but before we do that, what we want to do is take some more of the old painter's tape again. And we're going to cover the side that we've already cut. And that's the purpose of this, of course, is to hold that thing firmly in place while we do the cutting of the other side. We don't want that thing moving around. We'll do the both sides. So, Okay, now we're all set and ready to go. We can go cut out the other side. Okay, we're all set to uh, cut the other side now. The side angle of the uh, G-clef. We'll do that the same way we did the other part with the number 7 reverse tooth blade. Just use that other entry hole that we made, put it in there, and we'll be all set to start cutting. Here we go. Okay, that was nice and easy. <clears throat> you probably find, will find that when you cut this second side, when you cut through the bigger loop on here and on the top, we've already made cuts on the inside, so it's removed a lot of material. So it's going to be a lot easier to cut that. You, it, that that's a, a double-edged sword, though, because while it's easier to cut, it also changes the speed of the blade as it's going through the material. So you might have to compensate for that as you're going along cutting too. So keep that in mind. 
All right, let's take this thing out and see what we got. All right, we finished cutting all of this now. Let's see how this thing comes apart. Oh, pretty easy. <laughs> Just drops right out of there. <clears throat> take this off of here. And here we have our little G-clef. Nice little body to it. And uh, interesting set of cuts. So what we're going to do now is take this over to the mop sander and see if we can round it over a little bit and smooth it out. Okay, we're over here at the mop sander. <clears throat> Sanding mop, if you want to call it that. And uh, <clears throat> I recently put in a new set of pads here. So you got to be careful with this. This is a rather soft wood and uh, it could really take away a lot of the material we don't want to take away. We're just basically going to try to round it over a little bit. So I'm going to do it gently as I can. Um, a harder wood, of course, you won't have the problem. But uh, let's give it a try. When you do this, you want to try to have a rounding motion to it. See if you can round over those edges. Hopefully it won't uh, go blurry on me here. I don't know how close I can get with this. See if I can get it to focus in this area. There we go. You can see how it's rounded over a lot better than it was. Smooth out a lot too. Okay, we've got all our pieces here. These, these other pieces you can just toss out. Unless you're creative, maybe you can make them into something. I don't know, maybe a decorative piece. Uh, I don't know what. I think we'll just toss them out for now. Though. Okay. Now I said I wanted to make this into an ornament and uh, I decided to make it into a functional type ornament. Uh, we've got the actual um, G clef here and I'm going to make a little base for it out of this piece of mahogany I had lying around and uh, I'm going to have the G clef standing up like that. Okay. Um, I probably should have made it a little thicker in the bottom so I could put a dowel in there to hold it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a little square here that that base can fit into. Might take a little bit of practice and uh, adjustment, but I think we can do that. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm, then I'm going to make a hole, a round hole. And we'll make this into a guitar pick holder for a guitar player. Um, you just toss his picks in there when he's not playing and be able to pick them up, no pun intended, anytime that he wants. So the first thing I want to do is try to get this little square cut out. So I'm going to do that on the scroll saw. I'll come back when I finish that up. I'm not going to do it on screen here. Okay, I think we've had some success here. I just sort of uh, eyeballed this cut. I didn't... Uh, really measure it or anything and uh, made it just big enough so that the bottom of this will drop inside you could even leave it loose if you wanted to but I'm going to glue it in could also glue it up higher if you'd like uh, problem is you run the risk of that snapping off I'm thinking probably to since it's going to be just a table ornament to drop it down like that and glue it at the bottom with a little bit of wood glue and I think it'll look pretty good. Got to probably turn it around this way. Make it be the proper format if this is going to be the front. Okay, so what we, we did, we got that all set up. What I want to do now is go to the uh, router and round over the edges on this thing. And then I'm going to drill... Actually, maybe we should do the hole first. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy here. Uh, I would say take some round uh, cap from a bottle or something along those lines. Let's see if I've got anything here. Okay, I've got a uh, cap from an old container here. Just sort of eyeball this in the center. Take your uh, pencil, go around it. This out anyway, so. Okay, 
So we've got ourselves a nice uh, round area there we can drop our picks in later on. So let's go cut that out and round over the edges. I'll be back to show you what the result is. Okay, as you can see, we've cut this out and rounded over the edges on the sides and the hole that I cut in the middle. Little opening on the top there for our note, which we can drop in if we want, or we could leave it like that, or we could uh, glue it in. There is one problem, of course, if you drop your picks in there, they're going to go right through. So, what we're going to have to do is take another piece of scrap wood. <clears throat> As I said, this is going to be uh, sort of a scrap wood project for the last part. We'll take this and we'll cut it to size. Just uh, eyeball it here again. And uh, run our pencil around the edges. And we'll cut this out and we'll glue it onto the bottom and we'll have a nice base for this so it'll hold those picks inside. So I'll go do that and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, our little table ornament, music ornament, is finished. Uh, I painted the uh, G-Clef a silver paint and uh, the mahogany is braided up with the uh, clear spray on it and we now have a little desktop pick holder with a little musical ornamentation on the top. It's kind of fun to make and uh, you might want to try it. Um, if you do want to try it, I've got the pattern listed down below this screen. Take a look at it and you click on it. It's a free pattern and it'll show you how to, uh, it'll give you the pattern for cutting out the um, G clef but the base, of course, I just simply improvise, as you saw. Fairly easy to do. Nothing complicated there. Uh, you may just want to put it on a little base and make it a stand-up ornament by itself. Might want to put a little uh, thread through the top and make it a Christmas ornament. A lot of variations that you can do with this. Hope you enjoyed watching this project. If you did, click the little like button down below. And subscribe to my channel to see more of these little adventures come down the road. Thank you very much for watching.